Hi everyone, I'm Morgan Stevens. And I'm Carrie Stevens. And we are excited to welcome you today, wherever you are, to discussion group material based on the sermon series we're looking at together at Mosaic. And the book we wrote together, both are called Friendship Can Save the World. And that idea is what we'll be looking at for four weeks. Not that friendship always does save the world or that friendship always has saved the world, but that friendship can save the world. And we're looking into the book of Ruth to see how friendship did that in the world once and just might do again in your world. So during these four weeks, we're asking you to really prioritize meeting together. We realize it's a lot to ask, believe us, we know. We have a group that meets in our home too, so we are really in this with you. And during that time, we'll be asking you to do a couple of things together as a group. But your video hosts each week, all of whom are community group leaders here at Mosaic, will give you instructions about those at the end. So each week, you can expect a brief teaching from a chapter of the Book of Ruth, a main idea, a quote or two from our book, and what we hope are four great questions to ask and answer together. After each question, just push pause on the video and then come back when you're ready for the next one. And really, above and beyond all of this, our hope is that each person sitting with you around your table or together in a living room or backyard, that you would all grow closer and feel loved by Jesus and one another more deeply as a result of this time. All right, so here we go, enjoy. Hi everyone, I'm Janae Kim. And I'm Michael Kim. Welcome to week four of Friendship Can Save the World discussion group. We hope you come to see that the Book of Ruth isn't merely a story about individual lives. The stories of Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz reveal how the choices and the stories of individual people create a collective framework to support God's grander tale of redemption and rescue. In the final chapter of Ruth, as the narrative hurdles toward its incredible climax, it's time for our main characters to step back for a moment so that the townspeople of Bethlehem can step up and take center stage and play their parts. Boaz has appeared at the town gate, asking the city leaders to weigh in on the possibility of his being the kinsman redeemer for Elimelech's family by marrying Ruth. This proposal created a tricky spot and sticky space for the people of Bethlehem. Approving his marriage to a Jewish widow would be one thing, but bringing a racial, cultural, and religious outsider from the enemy nation of Moab into the center of the people asked a lot of them. When pressed to make this decision, the people of Bethlehem looked to the past and gave their ancestors a seat at the decision-making table. All the people who were in the court and the elders said, We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah both of whom built the house of Israel. Through the offspring the Lord gives you by this young woman, may your family be like that of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. Ruth chapter 4, verse 11 to 12. When the townspeople of Bethlehem considered bringing Ruth into their community, they looked back at Leah, Rachel, and Tamar and spoke a blessing over Ruth. May Ruth become a hero who shapes and impacts our nation. In a crucial moment, the people of Bethlehem affirmed the need for a kind of multi-generational wisdom to help inform their decision in the present, and they said yes to Ruth, naming the stories of three women in their history, allowing their nation's past to shape their future. Like Ruth's story, the stories of Leah, Rachel, and Tamar are complicated tales of people living in an unjust, imperfect world. On the day Boaz requested the blessing of his town, the people of Bethlehem stood on the shoulders of women who weren't seen as valuable or worthy of respect by the people in their lives at the time. However, God clung to them, weaving himself into their lives and weaving their lives into his redemptive will for the world. By picking up these ancient women's stories and remembering how they were once mistreated in the past, the people of Bethlehem said yes to Boaz's request and made space for Ruth to belong with them and be treated well in the present. Here's the main point we want to discuss together. Acknowledging our past helps us find a better future. Here's a quote from Friendship Can Save the World. Looking at and talking about the past to help us understand what to do in the present isn't left-wing or right-wing, it isn't woke or anti-woke, 
It's simply wise and biblical. Remembering the failures of the past helps us to do better now, in the present. God ultimately honored Bethlehem for pursuing justice, hitting shuffle to let their past generation shape their present choices, and embracing a vulnerable woman as a future hero. God chose Bethlehem to be the birthplace of the legendary King David. And when God chose his son's birthplace, he led Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. Spiritually, anyone who calls on the name of Jesus gleans from Bethlehem's gracious generosity towards outsiders. Now let's discuss the incredible choice the people of Bethlehem made. First question, what details from Leah's, Rachel's, and Tamar's painful stories from the past might have made the people of Bethlehem want to do better in the present? Take a few minutes, keep an eye on the clock, and we'll come back in a few. Here's our second question. What's a story from your own past that makes you want to do better in the present? In Matthew chapter 25, Jesus says that those who feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, clothe the naked, invite in the stranger and care for the sick, are ministering directly to him. Why do you think the God of the Bible and the Christian scriptures have such a focus on caring for the poor, the needy, and the outsider? In what ways are people outsiders to one another today? And what kind of things help turn outsiders like Ruth into insiders, like the people of Bethlehem? Here's a final quote for you today. May we love God well by loving the needy. May we honor the past by lamenting its grief. And may God's favor toward our lives and churches lead into a redemptive, multi-generational future beyond any breakthrough we could have imagined on this side of glory. Would you take a few minutes together and pray that God will continually strengthen us to be a people who, like the ancient town of Bethlehem, find healing and wholeness as we courageously hold our broken past, as we say yes to embracing a socioeconomically, generationally, and ethnically diverse future? When you're done, come back for one quick moment and we'll wrap it up. Before you conclude today, Revisit your plan from week one to take a risk and actively love a neighbor. How has it gone? Also, take a moment to share any testimonies about how consistently praying for one another impacted your lives. When your group meets again, continue to foster your friendships and remain connected to the need the world has for friends who cling, sacrifice, and offer rest to one another as we join God in His redemptive plan for the world. All right, thank you so much for being here over the last few weeks. We trust it's been impactful, informative, and most of all, something that has helped you love God and others more. Now go be a friend for Jesus' sake, in Jesus' name, to someone in the world who needs one.